Hello everyone and welcome to this video. We got a really special, exciting video. We're here at Peace Vale Meat Shop in Fort St. John, BC. And we're here with owners Aaron and Pam Jepkema. And today we are going to show you how to break down a deer, which is really exciting. And we're gonna be butchering it here at their shop. This is Isla's deer that she just tagged out on. So kind of just tying it all in together. And so Aaron, um, Let's talk a little bit about before the meat gets here. Sure. What can hunters do out in the field to make sure that you're getting the best possible meat into the shop? Well, a lot of times what we see during the hunting season, we know that uh, a lot of money goes into tags, backpacks, fuel, uh, all these things. And uh, so being prepared um, is probably the best thing you can be prepared. Mm -hmm. So you know how to make a good shot that you make a good shot, a clean kill, and uh, and get that blood drained out as fast as you can. Okay, and so yeah, trying to put it behind the shoulder, not wrecking too much meat. That's true. Obviously, okay, so now the animal's down. How, let's say you gotta pack the animal out, and you gotta break it down. So if you have to break it down, um, <clears throat> you, you're best to have um, sheets made into bags, or, uh, or cheesecloth, uh, game bags. Um, Keep as much hair off of the off the meat as possible. Uh, don't allow uh, leaves and twigs and sticks and dirt. Um, try to hold it up high and drop it right into the bag. Mm -hmm. That's the best thing you can do, and uh, and get it cooled right away. Yeah, bone sour is a, a bad thing. It, it's happened. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so now the hunter's bringing it to you. Mm -hmm. What, uh, uh, as far as the legal requirements here in British Columbia, what do you need to see from the hunter in order to be able to take that meat in? So, uh, best case scenario, best case scenario is you have the animal split and quartered, and on the two hind ends, you'll have uh, uh, proof of sex on both sides okay. of the uh, of the split animal, and uh, and a little patch of hide identifying the species type. And of course, you'll want the uh, the head with you when you show up. We have to look at the antlers, <clears throat> and we have to make sure that it's in season and and that uh, everything's above board. And the species license, and of course. Well. And of course, your your license. Um, we are responsible for the meat as soon as it comes off your vehicle. So before we put it into our cooler, we need to make sure that everything is above board. Awesome. And then just a little background on Peace Vale. Uh, how long have you guys been in operation for? We've been in operation for 10 plus years and uh, we started just a really small little shop and it's it's grown to be, uh, we did a big rental last year and uh, yeah, we're continually growing and, and moving onwards and upwards. Awesome. And then Pam, what would you say like cooler space wise, what what's your, what's your max capacity? Uh, we can fit about 20 beef in our cooler. Okay. Uh, significantly more when it comes to wild game. Right. But uh, we run on a first come, first serve basis for wild game. Okay, and uh, okay. yeah, awesome. Well, make sure you check out their Facebook page, Peace Vale Meat Shop, and we'll get to cutting the animal here. Those are gloves. All right, Aaron. Okay. Explain to us what we're doing here. We're gonna, hmm, okay. Somebody. Somebody split this a little wonky. You didn't get all the feather bones in there, but that's okay. That was. Are you talking to me? I uh, maybe. Whoever brought this deer in. <laughs> okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Five ribs up. Through. Front. So the, what, what, what section did you just take off? Uh, the front part. The front primal? Yeah. I was going to get to that. Okay. So here's your tenderloin. Goes all the way up to here. Cut that a little bit. I will say that there are many ways, there are many ways to cut a deer. Just so all the other butchers out there know, we all know, we all do things a little bit differently that fit us. So if you get any comments, just know there are many different ways to do this. This is the way I am doing this. All right. 
Hammer's sake. So there you go. You've broken your animal down, your deer down, into three major pieces. Okay, your the three. So you have the front, you have your loin section, and your hind section. Okay. So if we're doing this, a lot of times uh, during wild game season, uh, October 31st, everything's you know we're we're good to go. Uh, elk is ended, moose is ended, but then we get into deer season, and so many people, so many times, we uh, we have to turn away people with deer because we're still trying to catch up from uh, the elk and moose. So uh, this is, sometimes you're in a bind and you need to cut it yourself. These are the tools that you need to do that. You need a bone saw, you need a knife sharpener, and two sharp knives. You can get anything done, uh, meat cutting wise, just with those. All right, and so where do you recommend a hunter start? Do you start in the front or do you start in the back? Well, that's a personal preference, just the way we have it here, like we have this deer hanging right behind you. Um, we'll, I'll just start on the front and work my way back. Okay, perfect. All right. So while, while you're kind of deboning, what are some cuts that we look for on the shoulder? Well, we're looking for your shoulder roasts are right in here. And then, um, I mean, a lot of this can get turned into burger typically. Um, I like to try to cut off as much fat as possible because uh, this fat turns into a game taste uh, with wild game. So I try to actually try to limit as much fat uh, to go into the ground as possible. It's fine if it's on a steak or if it's on a roast. Um, you can trim that off, but once it's mixed in with the meat, uh, that's where you get your gamey taste. Okay. From. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna just start. I'm trying to do this for the camera. Just taking the arm off here, just like that. So a lot of a lot of this is just seaming. You find the middle of the muscle, and you uh, and you can um, kind of easily see where your knife should go. Like I say, I trim. Okay, so you'll feel a hard bone here. Just go on either side of that. Honestly, I uh, I usually chuck this at Pam, and she does this normally, but that's okay. sections of the shoulder yep. on just, either just side on of that blade. shoulder blade. Yep, just on the blade. And then we'll kind of, once we get it deboned, then we can kind of also talk about what parts good for roasts. Yep, I'm cutting out the, uh, cutting out the shoulder roast right now. Deer is significantly smaller than the elk yeah. or a moose on the shoulder blade, so there's not much there on the back side of it. Yeah, so I'll get a trim bucket going here, actually. Pam, if you want to grab it. Okay. Yeah, 
Yeah, and scraps can be used for a dog or yep. anything like that as well to waste not. And we're pretty fussy. This deer was actually pretty good. Uh, it came in pretty clean, uh, of course, so that's, that's good. And I'm really vigilant about checking for hair and stuff like that when I toss her, before I toss her in the bucket. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and mule deer especially, um, when they get that winter hair going, yeah. especially on the hindquarters, it can be quite tricky to, yeah, yeah. to trim off and not get any on the meat. Yeah. But, you know, you just do your best. Yeah, you do your best. And, like, uh, I mean, we do, I mean, there is, if there's excessive, excessive hair, like, we, it takes more time. And uh, there is, uh, there can be a, cleaning fee that we attach if it's really bad but um, most of the customers are trained up really good now well I mean there's taking care and then there's not caring at all then there's not caring at all yeah. and, and those and you know and the truth is sometimes it's just a matter of not knowing I mean that's how I got started doing this uh, anyways was uh, I actually got run off by, by a meat cutter when I shot my first elk. Um, just because I brought it in, it was dirty, and I cut the back hawks. And he run me off, and I said, well, pound sand, I'll go do it myself. And that was probably 13 years ago, and here we are. Here we are. So, for somebody who doesn't know genuinely, I'm usually pretty gracious. If you say you've been hunting for years and you bring in dirty, then... Oh, that's on you, I guess. So you want to maximize as much as you can. Get your knife in there and turn and twist on the back side. Like I said, there's more than one way to do this. This is just a way. How important are sharp knives? Very, very, very important. Yeah, I see a hair. I see two hairs. Very important. Yeah, you got to sharpen your knife every day. Do you sharpen multiple times a day? Uh, I sharpen them once before I start, and then I use the steel the rest of the day. Okay. Yeah, I mean you can you can get it cleaner. This is. You can actually hook in there with you, the. You can get in there with a the hook and. Things like that, but you know, you want to maximize the amount of meat that somebody's bringing in or how much they're getting back, so. So the front shoulder isn't real exciting. I mean, you can, you can pull some stew meat. You can actually, what's that thing called? Out of the front shoulder, it's escaping me. Mock tender and no. flat irons. The flat irons, you get your flat iron steak out of there. Sorry, I had a brain. Brain fart? Brain fart. I don't know if I was allowed to say that on camera. But no, you're allowed to say that. That's definitely fart. what I had. As long as you say excuse me. That's right. Uh, <laughs> Manners. Manners, Aaron. Manners, that's right. I know. I've been known to be. Hey, if you don't have fun doing this, you might as well not do it at all. Yeah, that's what they say. By the end of the season, though, you know, it's. Uh, you're pretty done. Usually for us, we uh, we do get into uh, a lot of domestic stuff in November too, um, just because the farmers have waited, the producers have waited all all fall patiently, and so we start getting on in the beef. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah, this is definitely tail into the wild game. Oh yeah. I mean we're in to December now, but yeah. Being that, I mean, do you guys see LEH elk? Like late season elk and stuff yeah. like that as well for the area? Yeah. Okay. Yep. 
You do. Okay. Done. So, I don't know. What do you want done with this? Do you want some flat iron steaks? I love those. Right here, right here. Okay, so you pull out your flat iron steak there. That's the wide side of the shoulder blade. Okay. Okay, and on a beef, they're way more marbled, but there you go. And they swell up and they taste really good on barbecue. There you go. Mm. And All there's right. some fun, fun ways to try that out, hey? Yeah. And then, uh, you can pull this out too if you want. This is a mock tender. Um, you got it on the other side there. Oops, no, never mind, disregard. Edit that out. <laughs> no way. I'll tie that one for you. And then this is where I hand it off to Pam, and she ties it up, makes it into a nice roast. Square it up. Tender sitting there. Isla got hair on her deer. Unreal, what do you think? It was like probably flat on the pole. <laughs> so what's that last part you're working on there? This is... The small Ground. <laughs> ground. Small deer. Yeah, ground. Ground. It would be the mock tender though. Right. In something that was a bit bigger. And that's which hair. part of the shoulder? You can pass me it for some stew if you want. Sure. I'll go ahead and pass it. Um, total brain fart. I'm, my brain as long as you say excuse me. Yeah, excuse me. So, so what part of the what part of the shoulder is that roast? Was that that came off the thick part of the shoulder blade? Yes. Yeah. Uh, like the the kind yeah. of like the deltoid. Show it. Yeah. There we go. So what part of the what part of the shoulder is that roast? Was that that came off the thick part of the shoulder blade? Yes. Yeah. Uh, like the the kind of like the deltoid. Show it. Yeah. There we go. Right here. Okay, and then it's this high part here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all in here. Okay. All right. When you're sawing, you never want to cut your meat with a saw. You only cut bone with the saw. And why is that? Just more professional. I mean, saws are for cutting hard stuff. Yeah, knives right. are for cutting saws. Yeah, stuff. so knives are for flesh, saws are for bone. It's so actually what it what it does is it oxygenates the outside of the blood, and it causes it to brown. So what I'm doing is I'm I'm trying to save as much meat as possible, but on the front end. It gets a little dicey at times, so you gotta yeah. be, you just shave it off. My rule is, if I wouldn't eat it, then I don't put it. So in this, in. this part's the neck. Yes. And upper part of the shoulder kinda. Yeah. So every piece, you just kinda shave a little bit and make sure that how much silver skin and stuff do you really worry about? Uh, it really, I, I do worry about it. I do like to trim off the silver skin. And if it's an older animal, yeah. the silver skin is tougher. If it's a young animal, it's not as tough. Okay. Yeah, it, I, it's, it's good to, I mean, everything's different than a prime beef. 
right? But well, you shot it kind of back rib in the lungs, so you, you did save some of the ribs. It's a good shot. And only one shot. There you go. That's good. One thing I do like about arrows more than bullets is the shock value, like the vital shock. Yeah, yeah. So like the impact, you're, you're cutting more than you are shocking. And I find like for, um, um, wow, no, I'm blanking. Um, when blood seeps into the meat, blood shot, blood shot, right? Like I've found when I've hunted with bows, crossbows, putting an arrow through an animal is significantly less blood shot. Mm -hmm. Or hardly any blood shot yeah. versus the vital shock of, a, of an impact of a bullet. Especially if you end up hitting that bullet into the actual shoulder, yeah. you can lose a whole shoulder. Not saying people shouldn't hunt with uh, with rifles, but just something to be aware of when placing your shot, right? Mm -hmm. So Aaron, what are we doing there? Just taking the skin off the inside of the ribs, the membrane. Okay. And why do we do that? Professional. Does it like, does it taste it, better if you take it off? It it doesn't leave a film on your uh, teeth and things like that. It's just okay. easier, to bite through. easier to bite through. Let the marinade soak in easier. Okay. There's a reason why. Because it's a barrier, right? Yeah. Yeah. That didn't come off as easy as I like, but. It's pretty a, thin. There's a camera on you, so. Oh, are you feeling the pressure here? Not even, no. <laughs> no. Never. Never. Well, they say the camera takes off 10 pounds, so you're looking great. <laughs> camera adds 10 pounds, bud. <laughs> oh. Okay, there. There's your spare ribs. Throw them on the smoker, the barbecue. Love it. We're not smoking them. We're barbecuing them. Well, that's what you're doing with ribs. You said you wanted them. Yeah, so. Yeah. We're not boiling them. <laughs> we don't boil our ribs. Well, only some people do. Can we save the other parts of the ribs too? Yeah. Or? Well, you, you can, yeah. But is that, is Who's that kind of, this? No. is I, that kind of like the only you, part of the ribs that are? Well, it just makes a nice cut. Yeah, okay. So when it was open, I used the base of the neck and I just go straight across. Okay, wait, hold on. Say that again. So when I'm, when you, you'll see on the footage of when I use the saw, I just kind of went straight down from the neck from this point on the neck. Okay. So, just to make a clean cut. Just to make a clean cut. Yeah. Yeah. All about angles. All about angles. It's all about angles. Are you gonna take a blade roast? Huh? A blade roast? Yes. Okay. okay. So explain what we're doing here now. Well, I'm gonna take out the blade roast here. So what, what part of the animal is the blade It's roast? the continuation of the ribeye and prime rib. Back strap. Yeah, it's just that that uh, muscle that goes on both sides of the spine on the, on the whole animal. Right, so you wanna get rid of the feather bones here. Take out the patty whack. Explain that. <laughs> what is patty whack? It gives the dog the bone. Oh, the jokes. This is uh, this is the patty whack here. Oh, okay. This is where the song comes from. It's the uh, kind of like the IT band, right? Okay. On an animal. Probably tough to chew through. Yeah. So you take that out. Paddy whack. That is what it is. That is its that is its name. I didn't name it. And this is the blade roast. Yep. See, I'm even learning a couple things on what you can do with certain cuts. This is I'm gonna rewatch this. This one nice and thin. Yep. So you just want presentation. You should do uh you should film Pam tying. Uh, mm. uh, you can't really get it. So, Pam.
can maybe explain a little bit of benefits of tying versus not tying? Uh, well, when you don't tie it, the piece of meat lays flat and it'll dry quicker while you're cooking it. So if you tie it, it takes it from being this flat piece to being bunched together. So this piece over here was like a flat paddle before and then when I tied it, it bunches it nice and you can cook it uh, where it stays more moist and okay. even cooking, you're looking for that it's, yeah, even all the way along. Perfect. And what, what kind of rope or, or string do you use for tying? Is this a specific kind? Yeah, it's a butcher's twine. You can okay. usually get it at the grocery store or... Okay. And it's probably because like you can put it in an oven or something like that and yeah, it doesn't it's like not break down or... not toxic, doesn't have plastics in it. It's just a cotton twine. Okay. Perfect. Back over to Aaron, what are we working on here now? Well, just we're getting to the, the neck. We're just going to get started on the neck. So the neck can uh, discourage you if you're trying to be perfect the first time out. Don't let it just kind of, it's a lot of knife work. Yeah. To get there's it. a lot of, there's a lot of muscle lines. Yeah. The neck is, and you can kind of see, you just kind of fall. So I notice you're wearing pretty thick gloves. Maybe, maybe tell the audience exactly what you're all wearing underneath those latex. I wear a cut glove underneath. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chain yeah. mail. Uh, I do that because I cut myself many, many times. And it's not the cut, the cuts hurt. It's just that uh, they You don't want to get your blood on the they, blood. they take forever to heal. And, yeah, and it's just inconvenient. I actually lost a fingernail once. That was one. I lost a fingernail because I. Did you find it? No, no. I got I got an infection. Oh, okay. From you didn't lose it in, in a customer. I didn't lose it in a customer. No. <laughs> no, that would be gross. <laughs> That's why we wear gloves. That's why we wear gloves. Yeah, all the things you learn over time. Hashtag food safe. Hashtag food safe. All right. So doing a deer neck is just wonderful too, because they're so big. Yeah, yeah, it's probably one of the biggest necks I've seen. Yeah, it is. It's a thick neck. Even for a doe, like it's pretty thick. Yeah. Are you bored, Isla? Um, you need something to do. Fire up that vacuum seal. <laughs> yeah, we'll show you. We'll show you how that works. That'll oh, be. Yeah. Then we can like set all the pieces out. Do a summary. We'll do a summary once Aaron's done with that massive neck there. In conclusion. <laughs> so I'm leaving a lot on because they wanted two bones for their for their doe deer broth. <laughs> Actually, it'll probably really appreciate it. So. I wonder how it's going to taste. It'll taste just wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Because you shot it. It's, it's going to taste it's way more yeah. flavorful. I don't, know, I don't know if it's okay. No, it is. When you bite into the first bite of any part of this deer that you've shot, you'll be like, you know what? This deer successfully started last February when you took your core class. This is what we've been working for since February of this year. I was terrible. And then uh, we actually 
had on the farm here, we had a guy visiting from Switzerland who was a butcher. And uh, he taught me, well, he got me started anyways, about what to look for, what cuts were. And he came back probably three seasons in a row. And uh, the thing about cutting meat is just get your hands on it and start doing it. And uh, the great thing about cutting your own animal is you know where the meat comes from and you're gonna be as picky as you wanna be and you can't screw it up because cook it right, tie it up nice, it'll all look good. So we got the burger trough here and then Aaron, why don't you kind of pick out some of the cuts we got here. Okay. So, Pam? Blade ribs. This is the blade ribs. Cross rib. This is the cross rib. This ribs. is your spare ribs. Your soup bones from the neck. Flat irons. Flat irons. And some stew meat. Beautiful. Look at how red and lean that is. Okay, give me a good clap. Okay, moving on to the loin section. Okay, so from here, we're gonna cut out the skirt. Okay, on another on a bigger animal that's bigger and thicker, but that's a skirt steak. Okay. That's a little dirty. It's a little dirty. We'll see what we can do with it. That's kind of right near the entrance wound there too. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, like I say, anything that I wouldn't eat, I wouldn't put into your stuff. You can make some soap out of that if you want. We got enough bear to use. Because we took like, oh, I don't know, 30 pounds of bear fat off that fall bear we saw. Oh, yeah. And she's rendering it all. So, where are we working on there? This is the most tender muscle on any animal. Oh, Isla, can you guess what it is? It's the It's the tender loin. Circle gets the square. Yeah. Huh? I just ate it myself. Yeah. <laughs> Just want to clean that up a little bit. What are we doing with it? Roast or steak? Well, you know, if we put both of them together, they'll make a they'll make a, a good roast. We can put it in. Like you want to tie them both together? Cooker. Slow cooker. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, it'd be the size of like a pork tenderloin. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, slow cook that. So, where is the tenderloin located? For those that maybe don't know. Well, let's go back to this one. So your tenderloin is by your hip, okay? And it's hidden underneath this leaf fat here. Lift out, lift out. Out a little bit. And it hides along the spine. Right in here. So that dark, that dark piece right there, it's kind of tucked in underneath the spine. Yeah. Okay, and then, so to give you a bird's eye view, that's the hind, that's the ribs, going in, right there, perfect. Okay, so. Looks good. Yep. Do a little bit more trimming. So Isla. Uh yeah. Are you are you learning stuff? Yeah. Yeah? That's good. Are you excited to try your gear? Sure. So what do you want? Out of the loin. Oh, what kind of cuts are there in the Oh, line? that's a good call. That is a good call. There you go. So we can get well, 
if we're doing this like you do it at home, I would debone it, right? So this is your back strap, right? Yes. Here, okay. The next tender, yep. most yep. delicious piece of the animal. Yeah, that is true. So in this section though, so from the back end, when, uh, when you get a, a prime beef coming in or any beef or any livestock, um, bigger animal like that, they, we split it at the back rib. So this is the last rib. Okay, and we would split it right here. Okay, no, I can do that. Just to show. Okay, so we're just breaking it down a little bit further. And then you get your New York steaks, you can get your T-bone steaks, and then you can get your prime rib, and your rib eyes, things like that. Okay, so rib eye on the front end, New York on the back. But in hunting terms, we always use the term, well, we don't always use, hunters typically use the term backstrap, and that's what that is. And they just take it out as a single piece. Yes, and they take it out as a single piece. Like if you're doing the gutless method, um, you'll you'll take this whole strap off right. out of the field. Into the game bag. Into the game bag yeah. it goes. Yeah. All right, so what do you want? Do you want more ribs, or do you want Please that onto the bag? Okay. All right. And so when you, uh, when you intake a customer, for instance, you kind of go through this all with the customer mm -hmm. as well. You know, what kind of cuts you want, that little like cheat sheet yeah. type of thing as well. And, and we'll be able to have a good idea of, you know, say someone had to keep their deer out in the bush for quite a few days and it got a little bit dry on the outside. We'll have a good idea to be able to say, no, you don't want to collect ribs off this one because they'll be too dry. Yeah, right. That's kind of idea. Or if they're dirty, different things. Man, that's like the tomahawk right there. That's right. Yes. Do you want a tomahawk? Lots of tomahawks. Right. You could do those all the tomahawks. Sure. Sure. Okay, sure. Dad's nagging. I'm going to peel that memory before. Yeah. Okay. So here's a here's another question I'd like to ask. Okay, so on this particular side we have the entrance hole. So how do you how do you work around it? Because obviously it can be a little bit contaminated with what got in there. Yeah. Uh, fur, dirt. We like that. we're just so I'm gonna cut this off right here. Yeah. Okay. And um, and then I'll I'll cut as much any any contamination. It's not going in. Right, that's right. So that'll be that'll just be waste, and that protects you as the person who's cooking it, and eating it, and it's just. So as you can see, there's a little bit of hair and stuff on there. Do you guys like wash it? Nope. Nope. Take the hook. Take the hook and scraper. Aha! Uh -huh. This is why we ask those questions. She can clean that. So by actually scraping that dry membrane off, you're taking all the dirt and stuff. You're with. as much as you can, and if you can't, then we have to do something else, right? Thick gloves on, like you gotta be, you gotta know how to like grab stuff because that's like a whole other finger on your fingers, right? It's not as not as nimble as just using your hand. But the meat is usually pretty cold, so having the underglove underneath there keeps it quite a bit warmer your fingers. Well, and you know we we have a, a small hanging cooler at home for deer, bear, whatever, right? And um, we can get ours down right to 32 Fahrenheit. And when your bone gets that cold, whew, it's almost hard to work with. 
Yeah. It gets because we just we just run latex. That's yeah. all our hands. That's all we use, right? So. Struggle Street here. Yeah, well, whoever half the the deer didn't really do you any favors. Yeah. Huh? Shh. I kind of want to get it between the two ribs. Mm hmm. Tomahawk steak is a thick steak. Oh my gosh, I, I am so excited for tomahawk steak. Oh, you will not. You will. You will thank me what? when we cook these suckers up. Relax. Yep. Are you sure? Yep. Are you sure? Yep. Okay. Can you say Instagram cooking video coming up? <laughs> <laughs> nope, can't say those words. Explain the difference. Uh, one's a clean bone. One looks fancy. One has the rib meat on it. Ooh, what should we do? That? What's your opinion? French does meat off? Yeah. Let's go meat off. They look fancier. Yeah, I'll go fancy. Finish that part of the wine. Poor girl. All right. So now we're at the back end, okay? And you can see we want about this is your eye right there, a little piece right there. I make a little cut right there. Line it up on this side. The eye would be about there. And then I just, my line just draw a straight line. Gotcha. How many times have you done that, Aaron? Cut my finger? No, done that and give person a heart attack. Oh, more than enough. You're hilarious, man. I'm a funny guy. You are a funny guy. Funny guy. So, so with this one, what's typically your cuts on the back end of the back strap? You said you mentioned something about New York cuts. Yeah, this is your New York strip loin. So do, is that like a roast or is that steaks? Oh no, no, it's all, it's all steaks. It's all steaks. I mean, you can do a loin roast if you want. But uh, they they are they are a staking cut. So 
grab one of those bones right there. And I follow it down. Okay. Always cut with the tip of your knife. The sharpest part of your knife is usually right back here. Because it's the least it's the least used part of the knife. But the you, this is a, you cut with about the first couple inches of your of your knife. For the deboning part anyways. Right. Oh, there will be a butcher out there watching it says it's not clean. <laughs> I think you're a little hard on yourself. <laughs> yeah, we do try to maximize how much a person gets back. Oh. So. I'm gonna tell you what, if you're doing your own deer and you can get it that clean, Going Ooh. to business. We need more meat. You are ahead of the game. That's right. You gotta be bone now what? So now I just want to cut just a little bit of this off. Shave the fat? Just just cut a the little fat. Bit. Cut the fat. Not too bad. I mean, it's a nice this was obviously on a agriculture field that you shot it around that area, eh? Yep. The fat's all nice and white. There's a lot of back fat. So you can tell it was in an agriculture zone. What color is the fat, or what? What do you look for? Well, it's, it, it's typically out of the mountains. It would it would be it would be white too, but there'd be less of it. Right. And you'd certainly have a lot more. Um, there'd be more game smell to it. You just want to slowly. Gingerly. Showmanship. Yeah. Yeah. The trim. This deer doesn't smell at all. You're gonna be. Well, and it is a doe. And it is a doe. How thick do you want your steaks? That inch. Thing. Okay. So we're gonna make these nice for you here. I gotta pull my, pull my drool back in. <laughs> well, and, you know, I find with wild game meat after cooking it for the last 10 years is uh, if you do have them a little thicker, I feel you can cook them better. That's Because that's they why. are so lean, yeah. they cook quick. Yeah, mm -hmm. there you go. Presentation. Just enough for the fam. Four, four chiclet mouths, two adult mouths. Well, you got to think though, right? Like how many meals is this? So this is one. That's one and that's a little bit of, well, that's one and a lunch for me next yeah. day at work. Yeah, so one, two, three, four, the, you've, you know, you've got well, we four or five got, days worth of meat. Probably meals, got right? six, we got a week's worth of meat here. Yeah, yeah, so. When you go to the butcher, you're paying for it, but you got to think of it as a meal. How many meals are you getting? But that's only two thirds of one half. That's right. And you're getting more because she did a great shot with her bow, and there's not a lot of waste. Right. Right. Not a lot of bloodshot to trim. That's right. So actually, here's a question: While you're just trimming that, how can you? So let's say you do shoot it through a shoulder, or you're yeah. starting to cause. Uh, bloodshot, what can you do to save the rest of the meat around uh, it? Cut it out right away. Cut it out right away. Because if you cut it out in the field right away, gravity won't take it anywhere. It, gravity won't make it spread because sometimes, a lot of times with uh, that shock, it just spreads. And then you're going to get uh, just blood inside the meat and it's 
and it's gross. And it's cheaper for you because we charge by the rail weight. So whatever, however much it comes in weighing, if you've already done all the gross trimming, it's either that or you pay me to do it. So right. Yeah, that's right. Well, yeah, and like we're talking about meat loss. Okay, you shoot, so you shoot something in the shoulder, it happens. Yep. But when you do trim it out right away, you're minimizing the loss. It's That's also right. always about minimizing your loss. Yeah. So what, what is that the flank? This is the flank stake right here. Okay. It's not and that big. comes off like the under part yeah. of the loin. Yeah, I'll, sh I'll show you on the other animal. Yeah, for sure. Right here. And this is your flank steak right here. Okay, so it's just kind of opposite of yeah. the tenderloin. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Alright, so this is the midsection mm -hmm. of the deer, which we call the loin. Yeah. Okay. Loin section, yeah. The loin primal. Okay. So we got a tenderloin roast, and you could fold it back and tie it if you want that way. Or we're gonna wait for the second one and we're gonna put two of them together. With some ribs, some backstrap steaks or New York's, uh, a boneless ribeye steak, and then six tomahawks. Ooh, that's looking at me. Okay, oh, I'm definitely um, If you are doing this in your garage, you're Lord willing, not on your kitchen table. Uh, this will show you how to take apart the back section in two ways. This is laying on the table, and the other way we'll do it is hanging from a rope like you would have in your garage or something like that. All right. Okay, right, first thing I like to do. So that's kind of into the knee? Yeah. Whew. You know, you do something right a million times, and then when, as soon as there's a camera on you. No pressure. No, no pressure. All right, so this is what you do. You give this piece to your kids, and they can do that. Isla, yeah. there you go. Trim it, you go Just the bonus. It should be... Okay, so... She hasn't had a lot of knife experience. Okay, okay. So pull the hair first. But I'm all for learning. And then we'll push it away. So there's a, there's a cap here. You can pull off on your round. Some guys like to do it this way. Some guys don't, but... And when you get rid of the hair, put it on the floor, not on the, not on the table. Because I'm Okay. You can follow the bone. And this is actually, I like to take this bone out hanging um, because it is, it's the H bone or the hip bone. And uh, I've stabbed myself many a times trying to pull this bone out. And so anyways, so it's safer to do that on the other side. Now we're going to cut out the femur. Get in your face. Like That's that. right. And once everything's deboned, it's actually pretty simple. Oh. 
Well, I can honestly say that's not how I've done it in the past. There we go. But that is clean. And now you've got a big old slab of meat to work with, which is a beautiful thing. And it's always, you just break it down in chunks, right? So this is your, these are your rounds. This is your sirloin tip. This is your sirloin butt, okay? So each one just comes apart and you get it through seaming, right? So you'll see there's a seam. And then you'll see there's another seam. All right, right there. And there's another, and then you separate the, uh, the rounds. There you go. There is the sirloin tip. Now, do you want a roast out of that? You want steaks out of that? What do you want? Roast, please. Roast. She's the boss. Okay. That's what you like. No, that'll be a good. This is. How's it working over there, Isla? Look at you go. You want a job? Not right now. Not right now? <laughs> she has like two. And there you go. She babysits. And she is for hire. I am? Sure. Yeah, you are. Is he right or no? Okay. So, like anything, I'm going to square it up a little bit. Now, you were asking about blue skin or silver skin. Right? Silver skin, right? So, I mean, you can. You can get picky. You can in, right? Just knowing that you'll always just take a tiny bit of flesh with it, right? Yep. But a shark knife goes a long. It way. does. Yeah. And some guys sometimes it's left on, sometimes it's not. But anyways, that's I what we're. Yeah. So that's why. So there's the difference there. See that. Quick question, was that supposed to be burger? What's that? Where, where would the, the bird? Where is the bird? There. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yes, that is burger. Yes, and I, so I will I'll chuck the, I mean, because it's still got meat on it. Yeah, yeah. You won't even notice it anymore. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Does it hard on the grinder? No. No. Like, does it, it doesn't get bound up? No, the, the blades, uh, catch it all. I'll help you do it on the other side. Oh, so I'm, I can. Yeah, no, I'm, I mean, we're doing it for, we're doing for film, it too. For film, but if I we was won't have to do the other side for film. Yeah. We're going to do a time lapse. I'm breaking it down off the rail, and then we're sure. going to do a full send. Yeah, let's do it. And if you want to trim off that hip. This is super weird, me not doing it. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I'm more of a dirty shirt kind of guy. So you're... Oh, wait. You know, I'm going to go on the other side of here. Your sirloin butt's connected to the round. So your sirloin butt steak connected to the round. Trim that off there. That's a steak or you just put that in the ground? This? Yeah. This, you can turn into steaks, you can turn it into roasts. Whatever you want it to be. You want steaks or roasts? Or do you want steaks, roasts, or ground? For what? That piece of meat. There you go, two good big steaks coming up. Yeah, it's tight. There you go. To be honest, put them in the ground. Okay. Because when we make when we make steaks for the fam, you know, we gotta have at least five. Okay. We could do this 
and those two to sleep. I, I would keep that as a roast. Okay. It would, oh, that, that's going to be perfect because, and it's a roll roast, like I've never had a dough before. Imagine yeah. it's going to so be So do you want, a, you want a big roast? Do you want one big deer roast? Carly doesn't do a lot of roasts. Okay. We probably have enough roasts already. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Carly, we do lots of stuff with ground. So if steaks. you're gonna make jerky, these were the cuts you make jerky. Yeah. If I had a stinky buck meal deer, I'd definitely yeah. make jerky. But piece them if we have mom's deer. If you're turning them all into ground, just piece them out to what they are and then Yeah, but no, no, there's some good steaks in the in the hide here yet. That, that, that would be this. Those inside these are, outside, these are that would be the good steak. That's a good steak. These are the, what you would use for roast. Okay, just grind it up. Okay. Okay, but we'll show the pieces what they are. Yeah. So this is the tri-tip here. <laughs> it's very a little, tiny. a very <laughs> tiny tri-tip. Comes off the sirloin. But we're just gonna go ahead and there's your baby tri-tip right there. Aww. Aww. Little baby tri-tip. Okay, so I'm just going to stop and restart this here. So while you're slicing that into burger, mm -hmm. tell us a great butcher story. you got to have a good butcher story. Like, some sort of comical moment where you, like... Where you, where you maybe had like an aha moment? Well, there was one time where we were first learning and uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 you're yeah. always expecting pieces to come across the table, you know, you're looking for your prime pieces, the tenderloin and the sirloin and kind of have mental notes of what's coming across the packing table. And then one time I'm like, hey guys, I haven't seen the tenderloin. And then uh, someone else in our crew that is a little bit hard of hearing, he's like, oh, I have this. This loin here, uh, it looks kind of tender. <laughs> and it was in fact. It the tender loin? The tender oh, loin. so it didn't get ground up. It didn't, get, it didn't get ground up. Oh. That's in the very beginning. <clears throat> that was first year. First year. I, I, I had a buddy, they were doing their own, uh, they were doing their own moose, I think. And uh, they, were, they were in a bit of a hurry. So they were just like deboning and then we were going to separate later. And the husband threw the tender ones in with the burger pal. Uh oh. And then his wife was like, "Hey, where's the? I haven't, I, I haven't packaged the tender ones yet." And then her husband was like, "Well, I threw them in this pile over here." And she was like, "That was the ground pile." And she had ground them up, both tender ones. That would have been heartbreak. Like on a moose, oh. that, like on a deer, forgivable. But on a moose, it's like. Oh, you're not letting us. <sighs> no. Well, he okay. said he wanted this ground. Yeah, okay. we're, we're, we need more. We need more ground. There's a full send. Full send on the ground. But then it's not matching the rest of the thing. <laughs> That's okay. It's a ground bucket. It's, it's a ground. It's, bucket. Gro it's a ground bucket. Get her to package some of those so we can show them the uh, mm -hmm. the finished product. The finished product. All right, Isla. Hey, so you're working with me. You're working with a knife. How are we doing here? Fine. I haven't cut myself. So. Okay. Well, that's a win. Yeah. We don't need the emerge room tonight. That's for Thank sure. You. So far, we got another hip to go. Oh. You gotta just call it out like that, don't you? I'm just saying. <laughs> He's not okay, wrong. That looks great. Doing a side of deer. So we got lots of ground. Ground. Out of that. Ground. Then we've yep. got. So what roast is this here, Pam? Uh, sirloin. Okay. Sirloin Ooh. tip. Look how clean and lean that is. Mm-hmm. I'm just working on tying the outside round. Okay. And then this is the inside round. Okay. And actually, the outside has a little tiny eye around in there too. Right. But just being it so small, you kind of tie them together to make yeah. a nicer piece make of meat. Make it a decent size. Yeah. Okay, so we've wrapped up one half of the deer. One half. So we're not going to show you guys the other half because it's going to be the, exactly the same as this half. But he's going to time lapse it. But we're going to time lapse it because it's going to look super awesome. Yeah. 
But did you have anything more to add? You know what? It's uh, don't be scared to try it on your own. Mm -hmm. um, and make mistakes, learn make from mistakes. mistakes. And learn from them and you know, it's good to do. It's good to know. Yeah, feel to the table, right? Feel to the table. Okay, so we're gonna wrap this up. We're gonna show you guys how to debone on the rail on this other half here and we're gonna wrap this up. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you guys learned something. Don't forget to check these guys out on Insta and the Facebook. Yeah, we're just starting out on Instagram, but we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. We're gonna hashtag it. Yeah, we're gonna hashtag right. it. So, and don't forget to check us out too. Hit up our YouTube channel because obviously you already have because this is already on YouTube. And check out the other videos, um, hunting strategy stuff too. So we're gonna sign off for now.